The president wants South Africa to be a construction site. What stocks will benefit? Cecil and Kumba sing from the same hymn sheet, Retransnet. Mr. Price update, a really good June. This is JC Direct, episode 596 for 25 July. My name is Simon Brown. Uh, and let's get to what the president said in the opening of parliament last week. He basically says... He wants South Africa to become a construction site. He wants infrastructure building, public-private, public-private partnership, the whole shang bang. We've heard this before. Now, we've heard this before 20 years ago, and it happened. I remember when Rosebank, uh, Santon, were construction sites. There were cranes everywhere and blocked roads. But the last decade plus, we've had this from the current administration, the previous, lots of talk, no spending. Just no spending, just not happening at all. So we've got to get the, the, the wherewithal. We've got to get the budget. It's not going to happen in a second. Some like uh, Sanrail are easy wins because they're out there doing this anyway. So there's absolutely no worries about that. Um, budget, yeah. Uh, do we have the money? I mean, infrastructure is a worthy spend. You typically got to build it before they come. I mean, think of Kucha, uh, just north of Kabecha. You know, it starts off life as as a white elephant, right? There's nobody there. But you can't wait until there are 50 businesses and you build around it. You build it and then they come. What would be getting built? I mean, it could be roads. It could be repairing roads, new roads. Uh, I imagine it could be a lot around energy. It could be energy trans, uh, transmission. Uh, so th there's a lot out there that can that can pen potentially benefit from it. We're going to have a good dig into that. The construction stocks, the stocks rather the easy ones. Uh, PPC, another. Sorry, I'm just keeping my notes uh, alive there. Um, there's a big if. But let's see. I mean, there is some... General optimism, we know all about that. That's nothing new. Uh, can we start seeing South Africa to be, become a construction site? We will, it'll take some time. And, and this is the interesting thing. Certainly the stocks have jumped recently, and it's partly just the, the goodwill I mentioned. But some of it is a sense that spending will start to happen. As I say, it, it isn't happening yet, but uh, sooner or later we can expect it. Now there's some construction stocks in the JSC that we can throw out the window. And Avenger is one of them because they earn almost all of their revenue from Australia uh, in excess of 90%. Uh, Marion Roberts, although Marion Roberts is having a good time of it, if we go to the Simon Squiggles chart, there's been a nice little run-up here in Marion Roberts. The key thing here is that they have really one South African division. It's in uh, uh, it's an infrastructure, right? renewable power, water, that sort of thing. It's been loss-making forever and a day. Uh, they were keeping it because they wanted to keep the skills. And that's going to be one of the challenges. With the lack of construction that's happened over the last decade or 15 years, is that a lot of skills have moved on. And if you are a civil engineer or a structural engineer or whatever the case may be, your, your your skills are in demand the world over and are infinitely movable. So certainly I think with the skills is, is going to be an issue, and that's why Marion Roberts was uh, certainly keeping it on. Uh, there's uh, Stefan Nuti Stocks. This one gets interesting. They, more than anything perhaps, and that's quite a jump in the last little bit, they more than anything are really focusing on, uh, well, not focusing on, the market is focusing on their, their claim against ESCOM. It's a plus a billion rand claim. We're not getting any useful data here. They haven't uh, 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 really done much. They really are waiting on that claim. That is the make or break for them. So you've got to take a view on whether that claim really is going to work or not. Wilson Bailey Homes Overcome, WBO. It is on a PE, moderately cheap. We're expecting 20% growth. A lot is Australia, but a bunch is also South Africa. Price to book is expensive, and uh, make no mistake, the share has been moving. They've all been moving to some or other degree. Uh, the stock's up over 100 bucks since early 22, what, in the last two years, up to 180. These prices will be closed Tuesday because this koi fin does not update in real time. I like Wilson Bailey Homes, but I'm going to tell you right now, I way prefer Rabex. So Rabex, the, the, the weird thing with Rabex is that they are already doing well. 
So they've got some Australia. They're doing in Western Australia, I think it's Western Australia, they're doing some wind turbine work. They've got some other pieces in Australia. Obviously in South Africa, they do a lot for Sanrail. That is their, their sort of biggest business locally is Sanrail. I mean, it's where Robex came from. They were just about roads. What surprised me, price to books 1.3, the dev- standard deviation is, uh, sorry, the mean is 1. Okay, so it's higher than the mean. Uh, fair's enough. That's not completely surprising. But the PE, uh, the mean PE is 16.3. Uh, current is 9.4 and forward is 8.2. I would certainly be looking to add Robex to a construction site South Africa portfolio. I think they're a great company. They've got great management. Uh, they've got Sanrail. They will walk away from tenders they don't like. They did the Bright Bridge, which kind of gave them a, a fairly significant uplift and a bit of a drop, but then they bought other stuff in to fill the gap. If you drive the National Roads of South Africa, you know all about uh, uh, Robex and where you're going to uh, f- just see them working on the roads left, right, and center. Afrimat which is a supplier into, right, rather than actually doing the construction. They've got the aggregate business. They've got the Lafarge, which is uh, coming on stream, which will be cement and the like. They've also got the construction materials, which doubled in the last period under review. I remember speaking to Andres van Heerden, and he said, yeah, doing really well. And some of that ordering was coming from Sanrail and from Transnet, which promised quite well. The... Current year is going to be tough for them because Lafarge will probably lose money for them. They've also got the iron ore. That's under a bit of pressure, but it's, they, they, they get it at cheap enough. It's still profitable. So I quite like Afrimat as well. Not, I mean, So the average PE, the mean is 13. The current is 13.3. I'm not sure about that forward of 8.8. That is assuming a year-on-year change in profitability of some 61%. I am not buying that. Price to book 2.8 is the mean and 2.3 is the current. I certainly like Afrimat. Liked it a whole lot more on one of the Standard Bank webcasts when it was down at 50. Uh, I was saying this is absolutely a screaming bar. We've now run higher to 68. It's pretty much at all-time highs. But Afrimat is the second stock that I would say this is definitely worth having a look at. What about PPC, you say? Uh, where is there's PPC? So PPC will benefit, right? I mean, they're also benefiting from, from lack of load shedding. That certainly helps them. Uh, they will benefit from construction sites South Africa. The problem is a uh, dumping of cement. And I don't know what the situation is around that. We were seeing a lot of Pakistani, if I recall correctly, cement being dumped into South Africa, certainly on the coastal markets. That was hurting PPC. Coastal markets, because you don't want to be shipping cement around the country, it's just simply too expensive to be doing that. But certainly, I think PPC is a, a possibility there in that regard as well. But then there's some sort of other areas which are perhaps a little more uh, uh, ruined, um, who are, yeah, they're, they're, I suppose you could say on a price to book they're fair, on a PE they are cheap. The stock has undoubtedly been running, I think, but not massively. It's, it's boring. It's industrial. Uh, they've got some ITC. Uh, but what they've also got, they've got two divisions of note. One is the cabling. And that is absolutely important. And when I say cabling, this isn't the cables running through your house. This is transmission lines. This is exactly the sort of stuff that we need if we're going to be spending vast amount. And part of that is simply because we need those transmission lines. You're going to build a new power facility, whether it be wind or or, or solar or coal or whatever it is, you need to connect it to the grid. They have that. They also have a battery storage business. And again, importantly, this is not battery storage for you and I. This is commercial battery storage. And undoubtedly, that demand has come down a little bit. Uh, it absolutely has. But that said, there is still some you know, pent-up demand there. And there's still just the, the move to green. I think that's very important. So I think there's still potentially space there. Now, I, I said up front, you know, truthfully, Everyone benefits if we start seeing uh, this absolutely happening, if, if we start you know, getting uh, South Africa into a construction site. The, the winds are just left, right, and center. But what matters is that the, 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 the economy is going to do so much better. I spoke last week about a 3% GDP being very possible for 2025. And the more I speak to people about it, 
we could do more than three. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's go do 3% to start with. So 3% GDP, uh, we've got this underpinning of construction. It takes time, right? You've got to plan projects. You've got to do tenders, get approvals. This doesn't happen quickly. But there are surprisingly more construction stocks than there were back in the day. I thought there would be a lot less of them. There's a lot that have left the market. They've gone bust as a rule, but uh, there's some left. Uh, so my picks remain, I would say Rabex, I would say Afrimat, I would say Roynet are the three that I would focus on. Some like Avenge just don't do enough in South Africa. Some like Steph Stocks are all about the ESCOM award. Marion Roberts, not much in South Africa. Wilson Bailey, sure, Wilson Bailey. On my list here, Wilson Bailey got one and a half ticks. Uh, Afrimat and uh, uh, Afrimat and Robex got three ticks. And Raynet got two ticks. Uh, the rest are, are fine, but they're not going to directly benefit from what we're seeing locally. And that perhaps is the important part there. We've got a power hour planned for 22nd of August. So what's that? Uh, four weeks away? Four weeks away. It's going to be with Mishima Gama. So back in the June power hour, I did the uh, trading as a side hustle. And I touched briefly on technical analysis because you've seen my charts. I am not the whiz at technical analysis here. I draw some horizontal lines, wait for breakouts. That's about as exciting as I, I get. But the, the Mishima Gama is irate as one of the top uh, technicians in South Africa. She will be doing the power hour on the 22nd. She's going to start it from a posi position of, uh, let's start simple. Let's assume novice. Let's learn some technical analysis. So talking around timeframes, different charts to look at, some basic patterns uh, and those sort of things, breakouts, some indicators and oscillators uh, and, and, and the like. Uh, JustOneLap.com slash events to book and for more information. And then last week we had our defensive income portfolio, local and offshore power hour. That is up at justonelap.com slash power hour. A great event, a great turnout, both on webcast, but also in person in Rosebank. And uh, a, a great, a great presentation. We talked a lot about red flags because those are the big issues, right? If you're going for income, it needs to be defensive. You'll find all of those online at justonelap.com. So uh, CrowdStrike, uh, yeah, it was – how long ago did I talk about it on this very uh, podcast? I was talking around CrowdStrike, and uh, I, I have I, – I own some CrowdStrike, and then they took down the, the internet on Friday. I mean, they took down a lot more than just the internet. They took down – pretty much everything that went with it. It was actually a, an issue with, it was an update to, to a Windows machine. So if you were on Mac or Linux, you were fine. It was corporates who have CrowdStrike as a client. So if not, you were fine. And it actually ultimately only affected eight and a half million computers. But if you affect the right eight and a half million computers, I mean, Sky went off air for a while. Airlines couldn't fly. The JC couldn't update their indices for a while there as well. Part of the trick is, is that a company like CrowdStrike has, has root access uh, into, into, into an operating system. And, and we can debate whether they should or shouldn't, but they do because they are security. So they've got to be right at the core. And therefore, a, in this case, a bad line of code is absolutely a horror. So the stock is looking really, really horrid. Uh, we, I'll, I'll go over more detailed look at the chart in the moment. If we look at valuations, I mean, th this is a, a stock that's only just learned how to make profit. Uh, so valuations don't tell us very much at all. Uh, PEs, what? Uh, 491. Uh, forward PE is 65. Price to book is 25. I mean, uh, uh, EV sales is 19. I mean, let's not get ahead of ourselves. This, by any stretch of imagination, is not a cheap stock. The question is, is it over for CrowdStrike? I mean, it's now trading. 268 was the close on Tuesday, which puts it pretty much in the low range. There is a sell and a strong sell from analysts. Uh, 10 strong buyers, 28 buyers, and 9 holds. Uh, average price target, 382. Upper end is 540. It, it by all of those metrics is cheap. But question, does this mean the end of CrowdStrike? And the answer is no. The answer is no for a couple of reasons. Firstly, because it's not the first time CrowdStrike has done this, and it's not the first time this is going to happen. They have like 300 of the 500 uh, uh, Fortune 500 stocks out there. They have competition, but not to their scale. And also, 
you've implemented CrowdStrike. To now remove CrowdStrike from your, your systems and implement something else is a humongous job. Is it impossible? No. Will some companies do it? Absolutely. Are a majority of companies going to do it? I just don't see that happening. I just don't see that happening. So am I a happy shareholder? Well, heck no. Not, not in the least. It is still green year to date, but not by a heck of a lot. I am not a happy shareholder by any stretch, but I remain a shareholder. I had some bids in on Friday that weren't hit. I've subsequently uh, pulled them, uh, and I will see where it goes. It was green on Tuesday night, which in some ways is the three-day rule, uh, but my bids were lower. We'll see how it plays out. I'm not exiting. I, you know, my logic behind CrowdStrike was very much that this is going to be yeah, – CrowdStrike it was cybersecurity, internet security, just – Computer security is going to be one of the biggest businesses in the world in time to come. I mean, it's already giant. It's just going to get a whole lot bigger. We had some, uh, we had some inflation data. Uh, Five point one percent for our June. That was down from five point two. What to say? It's a nice number. September rate cuts. Look on the table. I'm hearing some folks say maybe we get fifty percent rate cut in September. That we've said that. I mean. Nothing new there. Inflation carries on going in the right direction. We had an update from Mr. Price, which I got to say was a an update in some senses of two parts. I suppose we could best describe it as. In, in, in the in the first part, it talks around continuing to gain market share. It talks around continuing to uh, uh, do well. But the second part was really all about June, and June was a big month for them. And I think that's perhaps the important point, because June was post the election, uh, winter, which arrived late and severe, uh, certainly had come along. And I think we can say safely that Mr. Price is benefiting. They're picking up market share. They also, and Chantal Marx mentioned it to me on the show on Monday, she was saying it shows that they haven't messed up their fashion buying. They don't usually, they have at times in the past got it wrong, and then you just sit with stock, right? So you don't do the revenue, and then you've got to sell the stock at lower prices, so you get hit with uh, 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 margins get squeezed as well. The chart's looking good. I hold this. I'm happy holder. I'm not going anywhere in, in a hurry from here. More than happy to continue holding. There was also the Sasso production update, eagerly uh, awaited. I chatted with Meryl uh, Pick from uh, Old Mutual Investment Group. You'll find that on MoneyWeb. Um, and spoke to her, and I think the key thing, I mean, the message from Merrill was quite simple, and I largely concur, is that what management can manage, they are managing. They got the Mozambique online early and ahead of budget. I mean, kudos to them. They're getting coal back. I mean, they're managing what they can. There's stuff they can't, chemical prices, beyond their control. But they said something which was really interesting, and it was echoed by Kumba in their results on Tuesday. And what they said was they are seeing slight improvements in Transnet. Now, let's be clear. They didn't say Transnet is booming. They didn't say everything is looking absolutely epic. What they said is we are seeing some slight improvements in Transnet. And that's borne out from what Andres van Heerden at Afritech, uh, Afrimat rather, has said to me uh, around how they were seeing some business coming from Transnet. And, and it, it gladdens our heart. Although, let's also be very clear, off a very low base. Let's not get too excited. So, yes, looking better, but off a very, very low base. So uh, certainly some signs there that things are looking a little better. And as I said, initially Sasso and then confirmed later in the week by Kumba. Uh, one of the things that has been happening is we have seen, or say we, uh, the world has seen a bit of a rotation into small cap stocks, um, U.S. small cap, Russell 2000, uh, and out of tech. And the question then is, is the tech run over? Well, the answer to that is probably not. Anyway, we went, uh, I say we, I went and had a look-see at the Russell 2000 ETF. You'll find that just on lap.com slash ETFs. It's certainly an interesting chart. It's certainly a cheap index. The PE is 15.6, the price to book is 1.9, and the NASDAQ is 39 and 17, and the S&P is 28 and 4.7. So the Russell 2000 is cheap or at least a lot cheaper, but cheap doesn't always win. That, perhaps, is the biggest lesson. Just because you're cheap doesn't mean that necessarily you win. Sometimes 
I mean, it can be cheap forever in a day, and it absolutely just nothing happens. It doesn't help. JC is a registered trademark of the JC Limited. JC Direct is an independent broadcast and is not endorsed or affiliated with, nor has it been authorized or otherwise approved by JC Limited. The views expressed in this program are solely those of the presenter and do not necessarily reflect the views of JC Limited. Yep, that's true. It's my views, just my views. Not financial advice, not anything fancy. I don't have any deep uh, uh, time machines, just some views. Folks, we will leave it there for today. As always, appreciate listening to the end. Uh, if you're on a podcatcher, on YouTube, wherever, leave us a review, leave us a rating. Always helps us get noticed, get more listeners, get more uh, uh, traction going. Until next week, my name is Simon. As always, look after yourself. And if you can, look after somebody else as well. Cheers all.